The opinions, viewpoints, and beliefs presented on this program do not necessarily reflect those of the management, the affiliates, and broadcast partners, or the sponsors. Listener discretion is advised. Scarefest Radio, the radio you can see. And hello, everyone, and welcome to a spooky evening on Scarefest Television. I did a little something special tonight. I warned you I was going to be a floating head tonight, and that's exactly what I did on my sheet that I'm using. is not quite green enough to completely hide that I'm a human. Uh, the original broadcast date is October 30th, 2020. The year, the year of our Lord, 2020. My God, this year sucks. And this week has, has just sucked doubly so. So um, so we're just going to go ahead. To what we're doing tonight, okay, everybody, I've got, I'll have some things to talk about during the show. But tonight, after the first segment, it's your night. Um, We're, uh, we're going to take your calls. I'll give you the phone number right before the first break. First person I get calling in, we're going to talk to you. You're going to tell us your ghost story. Um, it can be your personal experience, something your grandmother told you. As long as it doesn't involve a fucking K2 meter, we want to hear about it. Um, so that's about all I got. Now, my, we did a little something special tonight. We brought in a celebrity co-host, Mr. Paul Bradford. Hello, Paul. Welcome to the show. How you doing, buddy? Um, Paul, it's a wonder Paul doesn't hate me. Because first of all, I tell all my celebrity friends, I'm not a celebrity. Why are you saying that? Jesus. <laughs> and by the, and by the way, I use the term friends. Uh, the, the celebrity part, I'll give you celebrity, but um, the uh, <laughs> the the weird people. But really, okay, we'll we'll put you in the para celeb category. But the thing is, these people, I'll talk to them. I'll see them at conventions. Well, I'll, I'll have them on the show, and they'll say, "Hey, can you get me in Scarefest?" And the ones that I like, I try. But up until this year, up until this year, Wesley asking to get a uh, someone booked at Scarefest was absolutely, the, it, I'm cursed. It, it was like, that was the black mark. They just marked that right off the list. This year, I actually had input. I actually had approval and, and inviting capability. And we had 12 to 15, depending on how contracts worked out. And Paul was the first one I got, and son of a bitch, COVID-19 hits, and I still can't get him in the damn building. <sighs> Would have been my fourth time, I think. Uh, let's see. One, two, yeah. Uh, yeah. You came uh I think the first one was 2013. I was going to say, first one is pretty much you were, uh, Ghost Hunters International. That's what it you were pushing. The, yeah. And then, uh, then I think uh, you came in for Ghost Stop two different times, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, um, I did. Yeah, it was it was Ghost Stop, and then it took a couple of years off, and then uh, yeah, came back with uh, obviously because of trending fear, I guess. You know, I was somewhat relevant. Um, <laughs> But, I thought uh, you were pretty relevant. I was watching the feedback that I was getting on. Now, admittedly, on Facebook. Now, I don't have cable anymore, so Travel right. Channel, you know, I can't watch Travel right. Channel. Um, but um, not missing much. <laughs> the uh, I, you know, I I'd gotten some pretty good feedback on on, mm -hmm. on the from the people that had watched it, and right. then uh, then of course then twenty twenty hit and uh, everything went down the toilet yeah. immediately, and. Um, so I was talking to Paul about it before the show. He don't even, he, they're not even returning phone calls now. They just, they, they just don't even care anymore. Um, I think it's, they're like everybody crazy, else. Man. They're it's, like it's everybody crazy. else. There was, there was a number of, cause after the, sh in fact, while I was filming with them, uh, the same production company were like, Hey, look, we got a couple of other ideas that we'd really like to sort of work with you as well. And I was like, yeah, no worries. And as soon as the show's finished, you know, we were like, 
let's uh, let's get back together in February, um, you know, March. Let's see what we can figure out. And uh, yeah, COVID hit and everything just got pushed to the way so, and just kept getting pushed. And so now I just, yeah, now I'm back and doing a regular job like like normal people. Yeah, like it, like it, like as little people. As yeah, little I'm people. now back down on the bottom of the token <laughs> pole. The um, uh, now everybody, if if you're not familiar with Paul's background, other than being a TV star, um, he's a uh, he's a tech guy. He actually understands this ghost tech. So be uh, I got one. <laughs> last time he was on, yeah, yeah, see, that's what I like about him. Uh, last time I had him, I, that was back on Paranormal Filler, I guess, the old show. But we wow. talked tech a little bit. Sure. Um, now, so he, here's the order of the questions. First of all, Paul, do you believe in, we'll call it paranormal activity. I hate to put you on the spot saying ghosts. Sure. You can answer right. it either way you want. I think, honestly, I think it's that same mentality as to believe you're alone in the universe. Um, it's it's sort of naive to believe that. I think, you know, you've got to accept the fact that even if you take away 99.9% .9 of all the claims and just mm -hmm. say, you know what, all the paranormal claims that come forward, that you know, 99.9%, .9 they're all just nutters. But that 1.1% or point, yeah, 0.01%, um, that's still hundreds and thousands of claims. Exactly. So there's got to be something. Now, whether it's UFOs, whether it's ghosts, whether it's Bigfoot, I don't know. Maybe we're all perceiving the same thing, and and just sort of you know put our own our, our own uh, perception to it. Sorry, we're we're all seeing the same thing, but but you know perceiving it differently. Um, but either way, I mean, there's definitely something going on. I I actually showed to one of my really skeptical friends, mm. really skeptical friends. I showed a piece of evidence I'd gotten, and it's one of the, it's that's one of the reasons I quit ghost hunting. It was so good that I knew I wasn't going to top it. I said, you know, anything, anything else, I'm just, I'm, I'm wasting my time. So I showed her, I said, now, here's the exact conditions. It was a very controlled environment. Uh, short of saying, Wesley, you fake this. What do you think? And mm -hmm. her, and her, her excuse was, well, there's definitely something there, but how do you know you didn't project that with your mind into the camera? And I'm like, I'm good with that. Prove that. That's paranormal. I'll call it a day right. and go home. Um, the, uh, so now knowing wait, that wait, 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 wait. So she would so she's super skeptic and her response to that's not a ghost would be that you mentally projected the image into a piece of technology. She refused to admit that it was a ghost, even though it was a voice saying exactly what we ask it to in under very controlled conditions. Okay. Yeah, that was, but yeah, but yeah, but she fine. would, but she yeah. would not say that it was. I don't actually get not saying it's a ghost. Well, yeah, I mean, I but <laughs> you know, potentially paranormal is is you know yeah. probably the best you get out of me. But 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 um, some, but but somehow potentially paranormal did not include projecting it with my mind no. into the camera. Wow. So uh, you so should that, take that on the road. <laughs> what are you doing? Some shitty uh, podcast for? We need to be out there projecting onto people's equipment and making some money. Because I never fucking managed to do it again. That's pretty much the whole story of it. Um, Sounds like now, bullshit. <laughs> now, to, uh, to, to follow up with that, okay. So you accept hmm. that, that there is something going on out there. Sure. sure. Now, this is what I, I like. Is there any technology out there that you've been made aware of that is actually worth packing around other than well, a, everything a that good I've made. Okay. Anything I've made is but now, now what, what, what have, what have you made? Now I'm, I'm familiar with the bear <laughs> with it, which is Everybody, a trigger, yes. trigger object slash uh voice recorder, which nope. I think is, nope. so you're now, what else does he do? Wrong. You're already wrong. He doesn't record the voice. Oh, what's it? It's record? not a recorder. It talks. So basically, Boo Buddy is okay. an interactive. It's an interactive uh, uh, um, trigger object. Okay. So mm -hmm. the idea is basically, um, you put it in the room, uh, you turn it on, and you leave. You put a voice recorder in there, and you put a camera in there, and you leave it, and it does the work for you. Now, it basically takes about 
I think it's 45 seconds. Now, if this may have changed because I know that the Sean was working on it a little while ago, but um, uh, roughly 30, 30 seconds to a minute, uh, it takes a baseline reading of the environment. It, it basically uh, um, baselines its, its own orientation. So if it's sitting upright, that's how it will um, register its upright. It will measure the temperature. It will measure the current EMF levels. Now, mm -hmm. if it, 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 once it's done, it will actually start the investigation. It will say, hi, my name's Boo Buddy. What's your name? After that, it waits 30, 30 seconds to 40. I think it's 30 seconds to 40 seconds. I can't remember what one it is. But what it will do is if there's anything happen within that time period, um, it will say something to indicate environmental change if it's moved or if there's an if there's emf it would actually light up its pores its pores will light up um if nothing happens in that 40 seconds it'll ask an evp question so you know for example um you know if nothing happens it will it will say um can you tell me your name or um do you want to play a game or um, do you know your ABCs? And it will say, sing with me and things like that. It will do a lot of these sort of, um, the sort of EVP type. Um, it, it, it's a very positive. Every question sort of is, is open to, to you know, a, a response. Um, and there's nothing about it to sort of bring any sort of negative responses. Um, we were very sort of specific as far as what questions to ask. However, if, for example, the temperature did change, let's say, for example, it got colder by a significant like a degree or something, um, you know, it will then it, rather than it asking the EVP question, it will say, did you make it colder in here? Still maintaining that line of questioning. Gotcha. But now, again, we're looking for a response to that. So it's asking the questions and it's all in a very cute, friendly voice. Um, you know, so it's, it's the design is, is really to attract children's spirits. Before we go to break, though, I need to something we discussed uh, about two, three weeks ago on the show. Mm. The jack o' lantern started because apparently ghosts are afraid of turnips. Well, it was, yeah, they were turnips. So, well, so, it was, it was so I'm just saying, a talking bear might, huh? Wasn't it witches? It wasn't ghosts. I thought it was witches. It was supposed to the turnips. Which is, I can't remember, it was some, but it was based out of Ireland. I mean, it was an Irish folklore. Yeah, and I, I, I'll, I'll, I'll relinquish uh, to your, because that's oh, obviously, no, that's, <laughs> that, that, that's obviously, obviously <laughs> not evil. a Ohio accent. Whatever it was, whatever it but is. But I'm just saying, <laughs> so if they're afraid, if, if they're afraid of turnips, they might just freak the hell out over, I'm, I'm dropping the F-bomb a lot tonight, what? freaking the hell out over um, a talking a bear. <laughs> Well, I mean, there was a good reason for using a bear because a teddy bear, it was obviously first things first, it was designed for children's spirits. You know, we get a lot of those. We get a lot of reports saying it sounds like a child to child's laughter or, mm -hmm. you know, little things being moved around. You know, that's some sort of, you know, that's the sort of thing that a child would do. There was the, 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 the incident that we did in um, uh, Trending Fear with the uh, Norwood Theatre with the, uh, the, the, the child with the ball. Um, you know, there's there's a lot of those cases where it's, it's a child spirit. So we wanted to create something that a child would identify, whether it's a Victorian era or modern sure. era, because the teddy bear has been around for hundreds of years. Yes, this is a modern looking bear, but it's still a cuddly toy that's, that's a familiar uh, uh, object. That talk. Anyway, everybody, <laughs> during the commercial break, now, if you want to call in and tell us your personal ghost experience, Paul and I will be here to listen to you. The number during the commercial break will be 859-298-3522. 859-298-3522. We will be back after this commercial break. Mama Ruby offers fun vendor-based events that focus primarily on the metaphysical and spiritual aspects of our lives. Well, 2020 didn't go as planned, to say the least. Since Mama Ruby's can't bring the vendors to you in person, they still encourage you to support them online. Links to these and other outstanding artists, craftspeople, vendors, and psychics, visit MamaRubies.com and click shop. 
Hey, scare fist. This is Jeff. Oh, forgot to button the shirt. You know, as I'm wearing the new swag. Yeah, thank you, Nicole. I appreciate it. I'm looking swank. Although, probably shouldn't be wearing this on the show. You probably already are fans of Scarefest. Just taking a guess. Now, this week, I have a movie for you that's new and a Shudder exclusive. It's called Scare Me. It's a horror comedy, but it's mainly comedy. It stars... Josh Rubin, Aya Cash, and Chris Red. Now, you know Chris Red from Saturday Night Live. I knew Aya Cash from a show I highly recommend, The Boys, on Amazon, and Josh Rubin. Josh Rubin all stars in it, wrote it, directed. It's basically, so it's about these two people, this one guy. We follow him. He's a wannabe writer. He's rented a cabin to write for the weekend. He goes out for a run the next morning, and he runs into this lady, and it turns out she is a writer as well, only she's an actual writer, and she's wrote a novel called Venus, and it's considered the world's best horror novel. And she, the power goes out that night. She kind of blows him off. And then there's a knock on the door. He opens the door and it's her. And she wants to tell, come in and hang out. And then they start to try to scare each other by telling each other stories. This goes on and on. It's kind of effective. The only issues I have with the movie, I, I liked it a lot, is it's a little too self-referential, okay? There's a few too many references to other things. I get it. But a lot of that is played out. Just don't name your school Romero School or hello, Mr. Uh, George Carpenter. They don't do as much of that, but there's a lot of references and it's just a little too much. They stay, they keep telling each other stories, they get drunker. A uh, pizza delivery guy named uh, by, played by Chris Red shows up. He starts to tell stories as well. There's only a couple of things I disliked about the movie. Now, it's not really scary. There's some kind of a couple of jumps, but not really. And I'm going to get shit from Wes about this, but the last 10 minutes, it doesn't quite end with a... Um, there's a cat behind me. Woo! Spooky. It doesn't quite end with the oomph that you kind of want it to. Actors are so good. I enjoyed it so much that I have, do recommend it. Like I said, there's only a couple of things I didn't like. One, the ending's a little, I just kind of wish it was a little bit more vicious. And second, never, ever, ever call pizza za. I'm ordering us some za. I hate that. I hate you. People who do this, I don't like you. I don't, I know, it's about me. It's not your fault that you're horrible. I just don't like people who call pizza za. It's stupid. It's pizza. I'm ordering some za. I want to punch you in the face and cut your throat. But once again, I understand I'm the one with anger problems, okay? Scare me. It's on shutter. It's about an hour and 40 minutes. It may be, that may be another reason why the 10 minutes, it may, it could be 10 minutes too long. 80 minutes is probably uh, right about where it needs to be. But it's inventive. It, it, it tells several different stories as they're telling each other stories. I, I liked it quite a bit. It's not as good as some of my friends uh, on Twitter who are screenwriters who are much more successful than me say it is. I highly recommend it if you've got Shutter. Take an hour and a half, watch it, and wear a damn mask. This is the one time of the year you can wear a damn mask and be fun with it. Wear a mask for Halloween. This is Joe Lewis, Bonehead Weekly. The Grim Reaper wears fur. His name is Oscar, a cat that lives in a nursing home slash rehab center in Providence. He has predicted over 100 deaths according to sources. Usually standoffish, Oscar only cuddles up to residents in their final hours. His eerie escapades were even published in the New England Journal of Medicine. Dear God, keep this animal away from me. And welcome back to Scarefest Television. 
all you people that told me you had ghost stories, call in. I don't care if it's a good one or not. I'll even, I might even let you throw in a K2 meter. 859-298-3522. Oh. Um, so, until somebody calls in, now we're going to... Okay, now I'm going to start with the shittiest ghost story I've ever heard. And this was actually on my show when I worked at Live Paranormal. And they booked me a guest for... I guess it was a paranormal icon. And um, said that we had done an event in a hotel up in Pittsburgh. Somewhere somewhere close around there. Right. Um, and said this woman had a paranormal experience. And basically, Paul... Her experience was that when she was in the ladies' restroom, the automatic toilet flushed by itself. Well, okay, so. <laughs> <laughs> on the same type of, okay, so there was, well, well, we were in Scotland, okay? This was with GHI. And uh, I had my camera, and I'm filming. And uh, we're in the, I think it was the ladies' restroom bathroom now obviously you know no one's there it's pitch black <laughs> okay so we're in the ladies bathroom and as we're talking it was a, i think it was scott and i and as we're talking one of the faucets went off now there was like a line of four faucets on one side four faucets on the other mirrors you know it was it was you know where people go and wash their hands okay so um so one of the faucets goes off and we're like whoa gee that was that was weird you know, a faucet going off on its own. And so we sort of ran with it a little and said, okay, if there's someone in here, you know, can you make the this faucet turn on? And then point to a faucet, see if it turns on. And <gasps> lo and behold, it turned on. We're like, what the? You know, this is crazy. All right, well, can you make this one turn on? And almost immediately, that turns on. Like this is crazy. Okay, so every t every time we're asking for this faucet to come on, it turned on, and Scott and I were like, "This is amazing. This is the best thing ever." Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. Okay, um, what about this one? And immediately, I'm filming it. The, it's coming on as soon as I point the camera at it. It's turning on. I'm like, "This is. We've got a ghost in the bathroom. This is confirming what was being claimed because that was one of the claims that there was there was a spirit in the bathroom." So we came out, told everybody. Um, I think then Barry and I went up there and we're sort of just, you know, trying to recreate everything. And he has his camera and he's pointing and he's like, okay, can you make this one go on? Nothing happens. Okay. Can you do this one? Nothing happens. This one. No, nope, nothing's happening. Okay. So whoever it is, no one, no, it's not happening. I'm like, look, it was doing it when I was doing it. So we went and got my camera again. And I'm pointing my camera, and immediately, as soon as it's like, can you make this one turn on? Yep, turned on. Well, it turns out they're the infrared wash faucets, right? Well, right. The, signal, the frequency of my infrared illuminator and his was different. My illuminator, my extender, was triggering the infrared on the faucets and turning them on. I figured that out like the second or third faucet. Um, yeah. The... <laughs> And, uh, and, and, but actually things like that are things that a lot of the ghost hunters out there don't realize now, because now I know in my experience and I've always said it was frequency, but now, um, uh, ghost top guy tried to tell me it, it wasn't, but the, um, sure. The, uh, the infrared, uh, the SEMA lights, I am a big fan of those SEMA lights. I know they only run 15 minutes, but I always yeah. liked them because I didn't get that spotlight effect. You, you like that three hour uh three hour wait for it to charge up again right yes yes yeah, i'm willing to put up with that to make it not look like i'm looking through a t uh toilet paper tube for a long time yeah, all like, the there are other ones that do that there, you know I, I did those wide angle ones as well the infrared illuminators yeah but back then uh, you may, i haven't been ghost hunting for six okay. years mm -hmm. in other words back then there, there were there was um um the pickings were slim. There, there, was, there, were, there was there was like three or four. You could only really get three or four. Yeah, and a lot, now a lot of people were making them in their garage, buying the parts at Radio Shack, which also tells you how long ago it was. Sure. Um, so I, I'm sure the technology has evolved. As a matter of right. fact, I, I was getting, right when I quit, I was getting into full spectrum. Uh, yeah. But um, the problem with that was getting an infra, uh, uh, UV emitter 
strong enough to actually make it work in the dark. Right. Of course, I, I never was a fan of the dark anyway. I don't, I don't, I don't see the point in the dark. So, okay. But, uh, <laughs> there, there's our little inside baseball tech talk. Um, everybody, 859-298-3522. And um, one of our people that said she, she wanted to call has, uh, but she oh, is, um, uh, she's giving it to us in the chat room because she can't call in because she has a house full of kids. In <laughs> my, well, oh, shit, it jumped. Um, in my old house growing up, it was haunted with an old woman that had died there. She hated men and would throw things at my stepdad, including throwing a horseshoe across the living room that had been on the wall. She only made herself visible to me and my mother. I saw her twice. Now, the interesting thing about this, Paul, is that this person told me they had a ghost story, but it sucked. That's a pretty cool ghost ghost story. Right. I mean, um, yeah. I mean, you know, <laughs> you, have, you have several witnesses. You have, you know, actual things moving along as you've been, you know, manipulated. And that was pretty cool. Don't get that often, to be honest with you. Like, you know, you'll get voices and things like that, but like, you know, to actually have something thrown across. Now, here's the thing, though, because I've had people say, "Oh, yeah, the picture just like came flying off the wall," and what they mean is it fell. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, so we're taking your word that it went across the room and not just right. fell off the wall because horseshoes are heavy. Um, now along those lines, now one of now one of the recent We'll call it a case. In other words, I did an EVP session. That's about all I did. But the story behind the building, and this this is one of those, it's it's in my hometown. And like I said, once COVID's over, I, I have got to get some events booked down here and bring in people that I only don't have to fly in, like Mr. Paul Bradford, because he's like an hour down the road. But the uh, it's a restaurant. And they keep... They have a ghost that keeps breaking the dishes. And I'm talking about those big, heavy restaurant dishes that are sitting right. on a shelf. And the, and the shelves are sturdy. I've checked all that. And they'll come in and they'll just push it over. And, um, are they so stacking them too high? No, I did not see any indication of that when I investigated. They looked perfectly normal, you know. Stacks of dishes. Did they have um, any video of the like security footage or anything? You know, stuff? that's the thing. They, they all their security cameras were like pointed out in the uh, dining area. They don't have like, anything in the kitchen. I don't think they they now they've got. A, I think they've got a Nest cam or something out. So that's something I need to talk. They need to do that. But yeah. at the same time, the activity is quieted down because your paranormal cooler, Wes Forsyth, went in and told him if. If you all don't settle down, we're going to get somebody in here that can handle this shit. Um, the last time I did that, though, the next morning, another stack of dishes got knocked over. Just like, like to say, screw you. Um, but, uh, yeah, the it um, enough people had seen stuff in the restaurant that right. even if you dismiss the dishes, in other words, this, there was no, there wasn't, you know, this wasn't happening only on the night shift. This was happening... Sometimes when it was completely shut down, nobody was there. Sometimes when they, they do cinnamon rolls and stuff, and so they have to come in real early and cook them. And sure. they and they were seeing people, you know, shadows um, in a hallway. You know, the, and once right. again, the, no, the, no, the, no, the, no. the shadow could be. Ghost. Actually, is there, a, there's not a window there. No. But at the same time, I've seen light do some funky things. So in other words, it could have come through no. the doorway, you know, but. But the, the 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 stories have gone on long enough and and been varied enough that I that I definitely believe that there is something going on there. Sure. Um, but uh, but yeah, they they were they actually called me in because we can't afford any more dishes. This is just getting completely out of hand. They um, couldn't afford a real ghost hunter, so yeah, they just, <laughs> pretty much. That's 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 a very good way to to uh, to to put it, Paul. Um, the uh, now, oh yeah, we're well. We did bullshit our way through that fifteen minutes. Everybody, come on now, call in, give us a ghost story. Talk to it. Talk to Paul Bradford. Uh, eight five nine two nine eight three five two two. Eight five nine two nine eight three five two two. We will answer the phone during the commercial break. We'll be right back after this word from our sponsors. 
Everyone is talking about CBD oil and it seems like almost everyone is using it. The research is ongoing, but the apparent health benefits are overwhelming. If you're going to use CBD products though, what brand should you buy? First, find out where the hemp was grown. Imports are flooding the market. How potent is it? Look for a brand that plainly states its concentration on the label. And look for full spectrum CBD. This means the oil contains CBD and all the other cannabinoids, terpenes, and nutrients that are found in the entire cannabis plant. Look for Blue Leaf CBD oil. Blue Leaf Naturals is a Kentucky proud company. They use only Kentucky grown hemp supporting Kentucky farmers and businesses. Visit their website at blueleafcbd.com now and use the code SMILE at checkout for free shipping. Horror. Movie. Fans. Four. Life. Find us. Four news. Four means. Four life. and darkly haunting all are all words used to describe Donnie Darko which was released this week back in 2001 troubled adolescent Donnie Darko narrowly escapes a bizarre accident when a large bunny named Frank leads him outside moments before Frank then tells Donnie that the world will end in 28 days and this leads Donnie to investigate time travel to try and prevent the end of the world. Along the way, Frank manipulates Donnie into committing a few various crimes. Despite Donnie Darko almost being a straight-to-DVD release and only being released to limited theaters, the film did really well and garnered itself a cult following. The film was also listed at number two on Empire's top independent films of all time. Following on the heels of Donnie Darko came the release of 2001's remake of the classic William Castle horror film, 13 Ghosts. After the loss of his beloved wife, Arthur and his two children move into his uncle's home, which he has just inherited. The home is charming, but that charm comes at a price, and the family soon discovers that the home has a dark secret and is harboring some evil entities. Despite having a stellar cast and state-of-the-art special effects, reviews for this film were mostly negative, and it only holds a 15% approval rating on Rotten Tomatoes. However... The film still has a very solid fan base and is steadily holding its own amongst horror fan favorites. And welcome back, everybody, to Scarefest Television. Uh, everybody's giving ghost stories in the chat room, but nobody's calling in. Uh, we have one here from Jeremy saying he remembers a one, he, he, uh, one story from when he was a kid. He was at a family member's house, and I remember seeing an old man in a black suit upstairs, and he walked in the room, and when I went up there, the man was gone. There's a lot of, now a lot of people, especially in old houses, they'll see that once, and maybe that'll be the only time they ever see it. That's actually a fairly common thing, uh, Jeremy, to see a full body apparition once. Uh, my, uh, when we moved in this house, Paul, now I made a, a rule. I don't do any ghost hunting in my house. I'm in a hundred year old house. I said I am that's not a good, going. Good. Yeah, that's a good rule. You know, I no none of that EVP session in the bedroom bullshit. No, none of it. And uh, but we did have one ghost that hung around here a little while. I'm convinced only because I would see her like kind of in the corner of my eye, and it, I'm, I was convinced it was an old lady. But when I would walk in a room, she would get the hell out of there. In other words, it was always that first thing. Right. But I never investigated it. I just prayed for her, and 
I haven't seen her for years, but um, but we were talking a little bit about people having ghost stories. Now, of course, uh, everybody when when you're when you're in Paul's position and my position to a lesser degree, because people still love telling me the ghost stories. They will come up to you at a convention and say, I don't believe in ghosts, but let me tell you my ghost story. And that's why we're kind of surprised nobody's calling in because everybody's got a ghost story. Um, now, Paul, I was going to tell you this one. When I was in Gettysburg, this boy came up and showed me evidence, which I'm sure you get a whole lot of. Also. Sure. Right. And he had this photo that was really awesome. It had a what I would call a full body apparition. Mm-hmm. In, in mist, okay, but it wasn't. It, it was solid enough that you could not call it pareidolia, but it also had a bunch of orbs in it. And this boy was sitting there telling me about all the orbs. I'm like, why the hell are you bothering telling me about orbs when you've got one of the best photos I've ever seen without any of the bullshit? Mm -hmm. Just you know, just trim that off. Um, have you have people brought things to you at cons that? Made you feel like you it was worth looking into, or do you mostly just see dust orbs and? It is a majority. I mean, and I still. I mean, obviously, you know, the other thing is, is I do make myself available on social media. I have Twitter and Facebook and, and Instagram and all that stuff. You know, I may have a I have a, a private account, but I also have a, a very public account, and you know. Um, you know, people do send me pictures. They do send me, uh, you know, EVPs. Um, you know, I do get a lot of that. And obviously, the other thing is I do get a lot of people bringing me their phone and, and zooming in on this area. And, like, <laughs> and, I, and I blew this up as well. So when you blow it up, you've blown it up again. And it's just, you know, there's a lot of, you know, stuff. And for the most part, like, I try to um, educate people um, on what is and what isn't. You know, I mean, the whole orb thing. I mean, that's and that's the thing that you've got some die hard orb people out there, you really do. I mean, there's it's oh, great. God. It's, I mean, you know, it's something which we should have, you know, just gotten rid of now. You know, we, we, you know, we thought there was something and we were able to, you know, definitively, you know, say that. You know, this is dust, this is bugs, this is moisture. We've been able to prove this time and time again. And and yet there's still people out there who are saying, well, no, orbs are real. You know, and I'm not talking about the balls of light, you know, because there are actual balls of light, which, again, isn't there are natural phenomena for that. Um, but there are, you know, for the most part, when you have a whole photograph full of of these little round blurs, you know, it it's dust. It's it's airborne contaminant. You know, you've got the 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 best one I get is the is the camera strap in front of the lens, and suddenly they have See, vortexes and um, <laughs> you know portals coming through their pictures. I'm like, no, that's your finger. You know, <laughs> you know, it's it's that's there's a hair or you know, it's it's. But the thing is, some people are so convinced that their picture is something else that like. You know, I'll try to educate you, but at the same time, like if if I get the the hint that you know doesn't matter what I say, I'm literally just gonna I'll stop and I'll be like, okay, yeah, I mean it's a cool pick, and yeah. you know, I, you know, by all means, you know, keep hold of that. But I mean, then there's the little old ladies who you know who claim that there's an angel by her, you know, her her, her husband just passed away, things like that. I'm not gonna bother educating. Well, of course not. And no. see, I actually don't have trouble with people saying I feel a presence with me or whatever, sure. because because it's okay. Now I'm gonna take your math that you gave at the beginning of the show one step further. Okay, right. There's so many experiences. Some of them you believe have to be based sure. on something. Sure. So now I believe in ghost, and I believe in the traditional ghost. So I believe that if one out of we'll use a big number, one out of 10,000 people who die mm -hmm. decide not to follow instructions, which is all I believe ghosts are, by the way, people that are just will not follow instructions. So they stick around oh, for shit. whatever this reason. This year has proved that we're going to get a ton of them. Of, of what? This year is going to oh. prove that we're going to get a ton of people who can't well, follow really, instructions. Well, really, yeah. Yeah. That's My actually a very God. good, that is actually a very good point. If you think people, all all of you people out there that think uh, that uh, when you pass away, 
that the light comes on and you automatically go to heaven. No, Look no the coach. hell around. No. No. <laughs> my right. I, I, you don't, this is a breach of my, my, my rights. Uh, <laughs> that's actually the best explanation. I'm going to use that in the future. Uh, FYI, the, um, but the the math suggests that if the if there is one ghost, we're we're asshole deep in them, as I like to say. They're they're yes. all over the place. Especially, I'm sure, yeah. especially at Walmart, uh, just you know wandering around. So yeah, so I don't. Who the, hang on, if someone's gonna die, the last place you want to go is Walmart. You don't want to go there when you're alive. You're now now you're showing your your imported soul because I'm going to tell you us Americans there is no place in America we would rather go than the Walmart. Uh, Chuck E. Cheese, Dave and Buster's. Are they even still places? I don't know. Oh I my don't God, know. man. Uh, now I admit, so, okay, some of the ghosts would rather go to Target because you know, but um, but yeah, yeah that's uh, snobby ghosts. They're the ones who only go in for one thing, but come out with a million. But uh, but yeah, but that that is my paranormal theory, Paul. It all boils down to following fucking instructions, right? And and right. and they they won't, and no. they get belligerent about it. And they're me 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 me, and they're afraid of turnips apparently. Um, right, the evil ones are now what. What drew you to the paranormal field? I'm sure you've been asked this a bazillion times, but uh, what what made you into a ghost hunter? Um, because I'm a nerd. I think really. I mean, just I'm just a big geek. That um, I grew up watching a lot of science fiction, um, which you know opens your your mind to the possibility of. of Oh dear God! <laughs> Someone's at the door. Jesus, the dogs have just gone mental. Um, the ghost so, of yeah. Brandon Griffith is with us tonight. <laughs> um, they can obviously sense evil. I think my kids finished work actually. Yeah. Um, so ultimately, I think it's it's more a case of still. I grew up with shows like um, The X Files, uh, The Twilight Zone, um, Doctor Who, Star Trek, Star Wars, all this stuff, which you know put the the whole um idea of there's otherworldly beings whether it's um ghosts or or, or or um bigfoots or you you know aliens you know there was that that opportunity um for me um to actually join a team when i first moved out into arizona um i uh, i joined a, a local team um ended up forming forming my own team out there um, and, you know, I started building equipment again, all, all this stuff. I mean, I didn't really know when I was building, I was just researching stuff online and, you know, talking to people who actually knew about tech, you know, not, not, you know, these weren't people who were like ghost hunters or anything because we didn't even have those at the time. There wasn't a lot of them around, but, um, there was a couple of, um, electric, you know, people who, who, who did a lot of, um, you know, electrical stuff. And I was like, okay, so if I want to do this and this, you know, what sort of resistance do I need? And all the, you know, like I was, I was learning a lot of, um, as I was going, basically I was learning as I go. And, uh, you know, so I started building the, the, the IR lights. Cause like you were saying before, when we first started doing this, uh, you could only get the Sony one or the SEMA mm -hmm. um, and that was it. And then, you know, the Sony was like $120 and the SEMAs were about 50 bucks, but, they only lasted about 20, 25 minutes before they started losing a charge. And then it'd take like three or four hours to charge them up. So, you know, I started building these ones that would last like 12 hours on one battery. And, you know, people loved them, you know. Um, and I was actually selling them through MySpace at the time, I think. Um, and, you know, I, I mean, that was 2007, roughly when I first started designing those, and that's when I first started building equipment. And uh, one of the first people I ever sent something to was Bill Murphy from, um, mm -hmm. well, he wasn't even from Fact or Fate at the time. I mean, he hadn't done Fact or Fate then. Um, and Bill has, has been a friend of mine for a long time. Probably, Bill's probably the longest paranormal friend I've had. It was him and Scotty Rourke. Um, 
I did Spooky a, Scotty. A, Scotty Rourke, man. He he, uh, he was one of the first people I ever told about GHI. Because um, I was doing a, a, a like a the Gadget Guru segment on uh, his website, on his uh, radio show. He had a radio show with, uh, it was him and uh, some guy called Wayne. Um, but yeah, long time ago, long time ago. Um, so we did that. Um, oh, my iPad just turned on. Look at that. <laughs> 40 Almost, almost, almost an hour later, my iPad finally turns on. Um, so yeah, uh, I was building equipment. I was doing that. I doing the, the Scotty Rourke thing, um, Bill Murphy, um, you know. And then I got to talking with um, uh, Andy Kopuk, which is um, he 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 was building a few things, but also uh, Gary Galka. Um, I came across him he, when he first did the Mel Meter. And he and I collaborated on a lot of stuff, different ideas, shared a lot of ideas. Um, one of the, in fact, one of the reasons that he went with the red screen, because originally the, um, the Mel meter was a very, very bright green screen. Um, and he even actually put it out there at the time that it was that bright. You could use it as a flashlight. Um, and it was the 8704 or something like that. I can't remember. It was, I know that it was the, he, the numbers were based on the fact that his daughter, Melissa, that's where the Mel came from. Mm -hmm. And she was born in 87, but she died in 04. I think it was the 8704. So he called it the 8704. She was born in 87. She, she, she was, uh, she died, I believe as a car accident. I'm not a hundred percent no, um, but then in 2004. So he, he named the, uh, the, uh, the Mel meter after her. And, um, you know, he, I say he, he actually ended up changing the screen to a red screen. Um, because I had to like, when I started with GHI, I was like, dude, the cameras can't see the numbers on the screen because it's too bright. Mm -hmm. And so we had to change everything out to the red and that would actually, so they could, we could actually see them on the cameras. Um, but yeah, ultimately he and I collaborated on a bunch of stuff. I mean, we, we talked about different ways you could change the meld so that it would have uh, the geophone in there, the vibration sensor. Mm -hmm. Um, he did the vibe after, so we did a geophone version and then we changed, he changed it to the vibe. Um, which was just a little little sensor inside the thing. Um, we did uh, the REM pod versions. We did. I mean, we did a bunch of stuff. But he he um, he really did really you know like brought some really cool equipment to the field. Um, and then there was Sean, which I mean Sean Porter and I basically uh, we met on a, a, a forum somewhere on uh, I guess it was some forum. Um, and, um, yeah, it, we, we started sharing, I just, sorry, my phone just told me it's a low battery. So, um, I'll just plug it in. Um, so, uh, yeah, we met on a forum and we started talking about different ideas of tech and stuff. And back then this was, again, this was about 2007. Um, we were talking about using lasers and how could we use it? Cause I just watched uh, resident evil and I thought it would be really cool if we could like create this grid down a hallway. And I had this idea, and so did he. Like Sean was saying, well, yeah, he's he's planning, trying to figure out a way to do this as well. So he and I um, were working on like different throwing ideas with each other, and, and you know, um, putting the equipment out there. And that's where the Sean Porter is the the uh, Ghost Stop. He's mm -hmm. the guy who, who runs Ghost Stop. And, um, yeah, ultimately we ended up uh, you know inventing about that. He he and I is who invented Boo Buddy. Um, you know, we both. I, I I worked actually uh, in Florida. I lived in Florida for like a year and a half, almost two years. <laughs> Jesus. Um, <laughs> and another ghost story. And there's there's another ghost on there. All dogs. <laughs> um, but yeah. Um, <laughs> Jesus. Um, but yeah. So ultimately, I think you know you know Sean and I came up with a lot of stuff. He started um, selling my lights through Ghost Stop. Um, you know, he actually came up with the grid. He uh, he actually was able to design the grid. I, I was using the uh, the dots, which like everybody uses now. Um, you know, I, I think you know I, I brought that out when I was working in Scotland, and uh, we had uh, one of the uh, one of the producers from GHI was out with us. And uh, as soon as I lit it up, I lit up this entire auditorium with these these green dots. And this little voice from the corner was like, "What's that?" You know, like. Should we stop filming? Did you want me to explain? Because <laughs> you know, he had never seen anything like this before. Right. Um, so, you know, and after that, he wanted everyone using them. 
because they looked cool on the camera and because you know um but yeah ultimately you know I, we, there's a lot of little little things but um yeah sean and i really sort of like brought a lot of equipment to the field i i bought one of sean's uh actual infrared grids the laser you know grid? the laser, the laser grid. grid yeah not yeah, the yeah, dots the grid, the grid. Yeah. I have yet to ever use it because I bought it the last year I actually ghost hunted. Huh. It is still. It's, it's it, the application, the, the, the uh, you know, what it re- suggests is that, like, let's say, for example, we do capture something on there. Because it's a grid, you can determine size, shape, everything. You know, you can, you can work it. And you have the potential there to, like, re, you know, create a 3D model of what it was you caught. And with the way the technology is now, once you create that 3D model, you could print that 3D model. You could literally print the ghost and actually have a model of whatever that weird thing is you caught on that grid. I mean, the, the, the possibilities that we have right now are just phenomenal. And we're still getting nowhere. No, yeah, well, <laughs> unfortunately, the this is sort of stuck in the in the whole uh, just EVP questions running around with their K twos and okay. well, every the, orb is a ghost. The producer is tapping her watch, so we're going to take this final commercial break. We'll be back for a few minutes after this break. Everybody, thanks for watching Scarefest TV. We'll be right back. Spirit Mechanics is here to help. Their background includes many different specialties across the metaphysical spectrum, including alchemy, shamanism, Celtic witchcraft, angelic magic, astral travel, and more. With over 30 years combined experience in the group, you can be confident in their ability to help. If there is a question you have that you cannot answer, they will do their best to assist you. Metaphysics can be intimidating, confusing, and unfortunately, abused. Spirit Mechanics takes pride in being selfless in the pursuit of helping others, being humble and honest with their clients about their questions, and lastly maintaining a professional and personable atmosphere. They want you to feel as you are coming to a close friend and they will do everything in their power to make you comfortable and safe. Chris Sutton. Shamanism. Spiritual advisement. Paranormal investigations. Inspirational presentations. Bringing light to the darkest places for over 20 years. Go to coyotechris.com to learn more. This week, back in 1974, in Wichita, Kansas, a serial killer known as BTK placed an anonymous call to the Wichita Police Department. In this call, he said he had left a letter in an engineering book at the local library. And in that letter, he described in detail the killing of the Otero family that he had committed earlier that year. That killing would be his first, and over the course of the next 17 years, he would take a total of 10 lives. His identity would remain a mystery, however, until February 2005, when he reached out to local media wanting to taunt them about his eluding the police, but it backfired and led police to identify him as then 60-year-old Dennis Rader. Just a few quick announcements here. Um, the, um, the mystical market this weekend has been canceled. Uh, Fayette County's in the red zone, as we like to say, so they have canceled this month's mystical market. Uh, CyberCon, don't forget, CyberCon is coming up November 21st. Tickets are on sale now and launching next week. Launching next week 
the Scarefest TV after party, our first guest will be Darcy DeMoss. Uh, after the show, after we do an interview, she will be, uh, she will uh, do a Zoom meeting Q&A uh, for subscribers only. So go to patreon.com slash Scarefest radio. <laughs> Almost, almost a TV. No, it's Scare Press Radio. Anyway, the link's all over the place. The link's all over the place. Um, Tracy, I'm sorry about that. We, uh, uh, it's bringing a phone call when, when we're already live is is terribly difficult, and I didn't get it done. Um, now I did it. I, what, what what were we talking about during the break? Um, oh, uh, uh, one thing I do want to address, Paul, in the chat room. One of our our viewers tonight. Wants hmm. to know how, what would you tell somebody who told you they wanted to get into ghost hunting? Don't do it. Run away. Run as fast as you can. <laughs> oh, come on. He's got the natural curiosity. Well, so basically what I would honestly suggest is that uh, you do some research. Um, you know, literally you know, go online, do. Oh. Tracy, we'll <laughs> be right with you. We'll be right with you, Tracy. Okay. Okay, go okay. ahead, Paul. Are we still there? Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, I, I think I've frozen, but um, I can hear you, so that's good enough. That's good enough. Okay. Uh, wish there was a better picture. They froze on. Never mind. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I would say mm -hmm. do some research, find a local team. Um, you know, not every team is the right fit, so don't go out expecting you know to to just mesh with everybody. Um, it is horribly boring at times. You could be sitting in a room. And, you know, you, you, you're just sort of, you know, sitting there just talking to nobody. Um, you know, imagine, you know, you're, you're, you're sitting in a room for four hours asking EVP questions and then you've got to go home and listen to yourself in the room for four hours asking questions and hope that there's a response. Um, you know, go into it knowing what you, what you, you know, what you want, you know. Um, don't just go rushing out buying equipment. That is probably the biggest error that a lot of people do make. Um, yeah. Um, but yeah, ultimately, you know, it, it isn't for everyone, but, you know, stand your ground, you know, do your research. Don't, don't accept, uh, you know, everybody's um, response. You know, like you could show some, say, Hey, I think I saw this. And someone says, Oh yeah, you got a ghost. Don't, it, it might not be not, you know, we, we don't know yet. We, we're still looking for answers, you know, so find the answers yourself. Do your own research, you know. I, I would add to what he just said. Okay, if you get something you think might be something, put it out there for peer review and expect yeah. to be shot the hell down. Yep. Be ready for it. Embrace it. It will teach you. And, uh, and another thing you said, Paul. I bought, I was a proud owner of like 16 infrared cameras at one time. And then it occurred to me, okay, if I run 16 infrared cameras when I go to a location and I'm there four to six hours, the math was not in my favor for having any any amount of time to properly review evidence. Um, okay, let's, uh, Tracy, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Tell us your ghost story to close out the show. Well, it's just a really quick one. Um, when my father passed away in 2015, we all gathered at the um, funeral home, and both of my sisters have work families, and they sent um, wind chimes to be sent home with my elder sister and my younger sister. Well, the whole night that we were at the funeral home, I went around introducing myself <laughs> as my older and younger sister because I was in absolute love with these wind chimes. So um, it came and went. Um, we gathered every Sunday for um, Sunday breakfast at Mom and Dad's. And we're sitting down to eat. Of course, he's not there. Um, we're talking about him and about the service and how well everything had gone. And uh, I had no sooner got sat down in my chair and we heard wind chimes. My mother does not own wind chimes. She's never had wind chimes in her home. Hmm. Um, and if I hadn't heard, you know, if my husband hadn't heard it too, I probably would have thought I was crazier than a loon. But we sat there at the table, and Carl and I both heard wind chimes, and there have never been any in my mom's house. Hmm. 
that was a fine, Ever. that was a fine ghost story. And yeah, slightly, well, I mean, and, and you know, it's touching. just something to let you, they just let you know they're still around. Yeah. And <laughs> then after you hear that, you say, go away. You don't belong here. <laughs> yeah. This is follow yeah, instructions. Go, go to the light, and and you get to start all over. That's my own personal. Well, here's belief, the but, thing. You know. here's yeah. the thing. So, so yeah. When, you know, when you heard it, I mean, and you thought he was here with you, how did you feel? Um, there was this incredibly peaceful, um, serene experience that I can't explain because I have to explain. That's, to, just, to, that's it. That's great. To add to that, how long did it take for you to process? That you were what you were hearing. Um, it was immediate. Okay, it was immediate. I knew it was him. You know, uh, I had gone around the whole night introducing myself and making you know a joke about it, and Dad always knew me as the practical joker of the family. And I guess that was his way of saying, "Hey, I was there. I saw what you did, <laughs> and here I am." That I'm so that's your nice. girlfriend. That that is a great ghost story to end our evening with everybody. Um, this uh, we've had fun tonight. Even if you, l- what's the matter? Oh, we're having mouse problems. Oh thank you all for letting me call in. You're welcome, Tracy. Thank you, everybody, uh, uh, thank you so much, Paul. Uh, we made it almost through the show before your camera froze, so that's always a good thing. And now it's working for some reason. Oh, the phone call. Mm-hmm. I love Skype. I absolutely love Skype. It's just, it's just a joy. It's a joy. It's, since Microsoft bought it, it is so much better than when it actually worked. Anyway, um, don't forget everybody. CyberCon tickets on sale. Go to thescarefest.com slash and click the link, but it's slash CyberCon. Uh, Mystical Market. I was gonna do my bad tarot card readings this weekend, and now or next weekend. Now I got nothing to do. I got nothing to do next weekend. uh, Mystical Market is called off until December. And, um, hey, get your memberships for the the after party next week. We're going to have a great guest to kick off the series. Paul, thanks once again. Uh, It's been great talking to you. And um, and surely, surely we will be able to have a convention next year of some shape or form. Fingers crossed, man. I, I, I hope to get back out there. I honestly, this was supposed to be my year, um, and it that that sort of fell apart. So let's make next year my year, and I'll, uh, I'll hopefully I'll see you then. All right, everybody. Thanks so much for watching Scarefest TV.